So let me thank all three of you. I appreciate it very much. We'll start with our questioning now. I just have basically, uh, Dr. Jurgen, I respect because you've been all over the world. I run into you from different places too, but basically looking and seeing what the facts are and what we're dealing with. The pressure now with us coming on so strong with the demand for EVs, the way the administration is pushing our electric vehicles out the door quicker and not, not concurring to the law because they want to get more vehicles on the road, more dependency. How much of a strain is that putting on the world market and basically us being able to, to meet the demand coming from areas of, uh, of places? My, my thing, what I said, is that uh, I remember the 1974 oil embargo. I remember waiting in line to get my gas so I could go to work. I remember all that. And I just said, I don't want to be waiting. I w <laughs> you were my instructor. <laughs> Anyway, uh, anyway, with that, I just said I don't want to wait in line to f if my battery, any new battery or something for China basically said whether I can drive my vehicle or not. That's all I was concerned about. I think it's a wonderful, EVs are wonderful, people like them, they're great and all that, and you buy what you want, but we're incentivizing people, almost bribing them to buy them, and then putting them in a very perilous situation. Tell me what it's doing to the world market as you see it with, a, with it basically uh, changes going on around the world. I've talked to the people in the Congo. They're, they're t totally upset, but it's a different controlled environment. Tell me what you're seeing. Well, what's happening is basically trying to, you know, normally energy transitions take about 100 years, and this is trying to do one in 25 years, and that's never been done before, and it's putting pressure on the system. And that's why one of the things I wanted to emphasize that it's not just demand from the United States, but it's demand from elsewhere in the world that's happening at the same time. So it is going to put enormous pressure on the system, uh, and uh, you just don't see how the mining is going to catch up, the supply is going to catch up, and so that will mean... Uh, Prices going up, it'll mean shortages. And then, as uh, has been pointed out by you and uh, uh, Ranking Member Barroso, uh, there is a real imbalance on how, particularly the processing of it. And, uh, and you know, it's just, it's unbalanced to, to do that. And it is quite concerning about just uh, how concentrated at this point the, the supplies are just from a few countries. So I don't envision a sort of 1973 in the sense of a... Uh, collusion of countries, but you can imagine t very tight markets and, and shortages and a few countries being in a very tight control of supply. Yeah, Mr. Boudreau, I, I know that you've been uh, through different administrations seeing basically the balances that need. And you know, I've had conversations, you know that I think we're out of balance of what we're producing and what we could produce and what we need. Uh, with that, the administration doesn't seem to have the urgency to try to get permits and try to basically make sure that we are able to to uh, provide our own resources here with the minerals that, and deposits we have. What can we do to change that? What do you think really needs to be done for us to make a su substantial change yeah. in how we extract in America? Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Chairman Manchin. First of all, um, share uh, all of the views expressed about the need to accelerate reliable and domestic sourcing of critical minerals. This is the fundamental work of the working group. Uh, consistent with the executive order and with uh, the direction from Congress under the bipartisan infrastructure law. The trick is, and the hard work is, how do we actually accomplish that? There are some fundamental principles, even setting apart uh, legislative reform of the 1872 mining law. And that means proactive community engagement uh, in order to do deconfliction. This is why it takes uh, way too long to permit a mine in this country uh, because of, uh, of community conflict, because of litigation, uh, because of uh, a history of environmental impacts, including to tribes uh, that, uh, that is still very much on people's minds. Um, second, communities need, as part of that, communities need to see the benefit of, uh, of uh, mining activity so that uh, communities don't feel imposed upon, but rather feel uh, invested in uh, these developments. So those are the types of administrative reforms uh, that I'm having conversations with the mining community about, and also conversations uh, within the Bureau of Land Management on how we can implement administratively. I'm going to ask all three of you just one quick question as I'm wrapping up my time, is that um, the greatest obstacle do you think that we face and the most urgent thing, need that we have, would you say it's permitting or do you have something else that you think that's basically impeding us 
for me moving forward or permitting reform is the most critical thing we're facing. If not, we're not going to be able to meet not only the demands of the market, we're not going to be able to meet the ability for us to even implement any of the laws that we have right now to the fullest. Uh, Mr. Bajor, would I start with you, if you, how your feelings on that is permitting? I agree. One of the biggest challenges is permitting, uh, allowing for responsible mining to go forward. I think there are many examples where uh, there are responsible mines, including mines that have been permitted in this administration, such as lithium mines uh, in Nevada. And so it can be done, I'm fully confident. Uh, the timelines do need to be reduced. I, th I think that permitting and the judicial review that goes on is absolutely the biggest uh, obstacle. I mean, you realize that sometimes the permitting process will be half of a person's professional career. It can take that long. Mm. And, uh, and also what that does to the ability to have capital available to uh, uh, undertake these projects. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, you know, it, it's hard to disagree that of the, about the importance of Nothing of more permitting. important than permitting. There, well, but... The, what I would point out is without access to mineral deposits first and the security of tenure to be able to know that if you find a, a you discover a deposit, you're going to be able to develop that, then permitting never even comes into play. Let me just say for the committee's sake, information, I want to compliment both of our staffs, on, the, on the, our Republican friends, on their staff on this side, Senator Brasso's, and our staff on the Democrat side. They've been working diligently on permitting reform. And hopefully we ho hope to bring something to the committee that you all can work on, because most of it's in our jurisdiction. We've been meeting with Senator Carper to a certain extent. He has some in his jurisdiction of, EP of EPW. We could surprise the world if we can get something done before the end of the year. And we're going to have some substantial, I think, recommendations, hopefully, towards that period. So we're, we're working diligently on this. We have the same conclusion you all have. Senator Brasso. 